Hello, welcome to another weekend of our Middle School Ministry Weekend Service videos. Um, if you don't know me, my name is Megan, and I have the privilege of being on staff for our Middle School Ministry. Um, if you're unfamiliar with our videos, we start off with a game, followed by some scripture and some prayer that lead us into our service for the night, which includes worship and teaching. Uh, this service is actually recorded on Wednesdays, which is really cool. We are meeting together on campus Wednesday nights from uh, 7 to 8.15, and it's so great. It is so wonderful to be together again. So if you're interested, um, don't join us this week, but next week, because this Wednesday is the day before Thanksgiving, and we will not be there, but we hope to see you again soon, maybe the following Wednesday from 7 to 8.15. Another important announcement is that our last week of Tribes is this Sunday. So it's this weekend, it's from 6 to 7.15, and we hope to see you guys there. With that, um, we love you, and we hope you enjoy the video. Hello guys, welcome to another weekend game. We're excited to be here. Um, today we are doing some more holiday games because the holidays are basically here it's crazy i don't know i don't know how that happens but we love thanksgiving and thanksgiving is like next week so because thanksgiving is next thursday we will not be meeting on wednesday however we will have a video for you that week so look for that on youtube for the link on instagram wherever you know you can find it because it'll be there it'll be great and with that we're going to move on to an old faithful game, Nailed It or Failed It, Deep Fried Turkey Edition. I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, if you don't deep fry turkeys right, they explode. <laughs> I'm excited. All wow. right. First one. Here we go. Eat a good steak, what I would say. Did you see his stick? Yeah. Was that a hockey stick? No, it was like a tree oh. branch. It's tree. I don't. I don't there's, so, there's so few inf little information. I know. You know, I but I did hear a country accent, so I think this guy knows what he's doing. Okay. Mm. I'm a and the stick is you know just using what you have. Look at all those sticks in the back end of the video. I'm gonna say nailed it over here. Nailed it, Megan. What are you thinking? My my like gut feeling is that he failed it, but I don't know. I I have no idea. <laughs> I want to say he nailed it because it's the first video, and I feel like that's like a good move for the you know for the game. But I'm gonna True. go failed it just because he's holding it over the oil, and you started to hear the oil sizzle, which means there might be like water dripping off, and I know water and oil don't mix, and it's not good. Oil I have no idea. Touching so I'm, skin. I'm saying failed it. I'm saying failed it. Let's uh, let's see the full clip. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is frightening. Nailed it. Robbie, you're right. This guy knows what he's doing. All right, here we go. Next one. <laughs> Real slow. Ooh. All right, Robbie, you give your answer first. You're the expert. I'm I'm not an expert. I've just eaten them before, and I did not <laughs> do the deep frying myself. Um, I would say I I don't know. I'm gonna say failed it just because I, he doesn't look like he knows what he's doing. He's got those big gloves on. You know what I'm saying it just doesn't. It just don't look right to me. Mm -hmm. The turkey looks like it's like, like, boom, like plugging the hole, you know what I mean, yeah. for the pot. I'm, I'm not down. I'm going to say failed it. Yeah, me too. I saw some stuff bubbling up on the side. I know it's not like a very clear picture, but there were some things overflowing and I have a feeling that's a bad, that's bad. So I'm going to say failed it too. I also am going failed it. The, my thinking too was this video looks pretty old. And if it was a tame video, it wouldn't have lasted this long, but it's probably lasted the 
the the years on the internet because we're about to see something crazy. Here we go. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah, it's easier to do. It's real slow. Oh. <gasps> Yeah. My question is, if you know something has the potential to blow up, why are you wearing shorts? <laughs> <laughs> so I just don't get that. Uh, yeah, I don't know how much the oven mitts are going to protect you on that one. <laughs> are you allowed to deep fry turkeys in California? That seems like something we shouldn't be allowed to do here. <laughs> Probably yeah. not. Let's go to the next clip. Oh, go oh gosh. Watch your feet. It's already on fire. Yeah, <laughs> what? I thought I clicked the wrong video. I was like, oh no, I messed up, but. Huh. This man here with short sleeves, no shoes on, goodness good. Look like they already got a burnt Whoa. patch in the grass. Look at the grass around the pot. It's already black. Like they don't already burnt up some stuff there. <laughs> goodness gracious. So you're saying failed it, Robbie? Um, I'm get, oof, I really want to say nailed it just because, but I'm going to go failed it just because it just looked like a poor, it just looks like a poor decision making. I'm just going to say failed it. I would, I would agree 100%. The first thing I noticed was that, again, this gentleman is wearing shorts and to boot, he has no shoes on. <laughs> I, I'm going nailed it. I'm thinking they're trying to throw us a curveball by showing it on fire. And I think the fire is going to settle down and it's going to be success. We'll see though. Could be very wrong. Oh, man. Watch your feet. <laughs> Watch your feet. Yeah, he's barefoot. Holy goodness gracious. <gasps> <laughs> you don't even know what happens to this poor person that's because they don't got no more house you see all that the <laughs> fence burn goodness egregious <laughs> all right oh my three God. to two to one i'm in last here we go next video oh, yeah. <laughs> I love the Christmas music in the background. Christmas time! <laughs> it's my least favorite part. <laughs> All right, Robbie, what are you saying? You're three I'm for three. First. Because you're three for three. Gross. I'm going to say nailed it. I think I heard a country accent that flannel is telling me everything I need to go. My man has deep fried a turkey before. <laughs> Megan? Yeah, the setup is just so much smarter than the other ones we've seen. I mean, he's like pretty like a good decent away from the house he's not by a fence he's got long sleeves on and jeans i'm i'm going they they got it nailed it all right i gotta go for the win i can't say the same thing as you guys i'm down by two so i'm going failed it hopefully i hey is it sinful to say that i hope they fail it it might be i kind of want to see a fiery explosion again but I hope everyone's safe. I'll say that, though. <laughs> Am I horrible? Am I that horrible? I bet all of the kids right now are agreeing with me. All right, here we go. Oh, my gosh. All right, sir. Uh... Oh, nice. Dang it. That turkey already looked cooked. What's going on? A broomstick? Goodness gracious. <laughs> yeah why does it look cooked already maybe they, they got they, they got yeah. refried turkey like refried beans <laughs> <laughs> i hope so <laughs> oh man robbie what are you thinking i'm going to say oh i don't like this at all I just don't like it. I think probably because my California PTSD is kicking in. I see all the grass. I just am like, that'd be the worst place for a fire. Please don't do this. 
Um, I'm going to say, oh, I'm going to say nailed it. That was, that was my, my vote too. Just that was your gut reaction? Yeah, that was my gut reaction. I All mean, right. Eh. It's away from things. They have shoes and pants on. As much as they are, I feel like that's really big for me. I don't know why. <laughs> Megan only cares about safety. The only thing Megan cares about is safety. That's it. Oh man, <laughs> that's all I care about. You know, there's no. I don't see any houses around or fences. They're working together, so I feel like that's a good sign. I don't know. All right, I'm voting failed it. I'm hoping for failed it. I said it before. I'll say it again. Here we go. Slow. Yep, yep, yep. Real, real slow. Yeah. Slow. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? They dropped it. <laughs> Did the like hook break and the turkey? <laughs> Maybe I think so. I think... Uh, that was right. the tape failed it, but that's definitely a fail. Oil all, right. all over the place. My God. All right. Wow. But what if their what if their yawn just yeah. their lawn just smells like turkey for the next year? <laughs> it probably will. <laughs> every day, every time they start mowing the lawn, it's picking up the smell again. <laughs> it smells like turkey. Leftovers that just keep and keep and keep. <laughs> uh, oh man. All right, Robbie, I think you got four for five. Megan, I think you went three for five, and I yeah. went two for five. Two for. Tofer. It is what it is. Well done, Robbie. Maybe we should uh, d uh, deep fry one for for Thanksgiving. As long as Meg is in charge. Oh yeah. My gosh. <laughs> and as long as we're what wearing flannel, pants, and shoes. And country accents. I'm going to turn my country back on. I'm going to make you guys wear gloves. Girl, yeah, I won't be over there. I'll be filming. Yeah. You'll be about broom. No brooms allowed. <laughs> Well, Connor, I'm going to make you wear gloves because there's no way I'm dropping it in the oil. Uh, students, hope you guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Enjoy with family or whatever you're going to be doing with uh, all the restrictions going on. But we hope you guys enjoy it. We will not see you on Wednesday, but you can watch another video of our weekend service next Saturday or Sunday. And then we'll see you again the Wednesday after in December. So. Love you guys. Enjoy the video. This week, I'm reading from 1 Peter 4, 8. Most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins. Let's pray. Lord God, we just thank you that we are able to put out these videos and to meet safely on campus, Lord God, would you just continue to provide us avenues where we can um, just worship you and praise you and learn about you, Lord. God, we thank you for your word. We thank you that we are able to see that you love us in your word, Lord God, and to see all the different ways you've shown us um, how to love the people around us, Lord. I just ask that we would latch on to that this week, that we would um, really take to heart the different ways that we can love the people around us, whether they're different or difficult or people we envy or even people we hate. Lord, I just ask that you would soften our hearts and give us a bold love, a love that comes only from you. God, we thank you so much for who you are. We thank you for knowing us and for loving us. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Love it. Thank you. So uh, we, we're in week four of a series, and this is our final night of talking about this topic that we've been calling canceled and talking about cancel culture and different things. And, but here's the, what we've really been talking about, how to love people that sometimes are kind of hard to love. And so, yeah, we've been talking about social media a bit, but it's so much bigger than just social media. It's more about our lives and um, the decisions we make and the way that we talk with people. But before we get to that, here's I've got two questions 
We haven't asked this yet, and I've been curious this whole time. Who are some famous people you follow? So whether it's like Instagram or Snapchat, if that's still like popular, I'm sure it is. Or YouTube subscribers that you're like, this is the person to watch. Who are some famous people that you like to follow? Maybe even throw out some names that I don't know. Or, or I do know, I don't know. What you got? Who's like your person? Who's the person you like to follow? The D'Amelio sisters. Are they YouTubers? They're TikTokers. Nice. How did I not say anything about TikTok? Wow, missed, missed the example on that one. Anything else? Dwayne, 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 Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who's now trying to go by DJ. Have you noticed that? He keeps pushing DJ because I think The Rock is like trademarked by WWE. And so he has to like stop calling himself The Rock. And so now he's always like, I'm DJ. And we're like, dude, you're The Rock. We know you are. Anyone else? Anyone else? Mr. What? Mr. Bruno. Mr. Bruno. Yes. Is he, what is he on? What? YouTube, TikTok, Snap, is he just a celebrity? He's a TikToker. TikToker, is he funny? Is he kind of inappropriate or is he appropriate? Uh, I mean, not really funny. Okay, good, good. No, we're not gonna pull up any TikToks right now. Absolutely not. So, uh, all right, so that's people you maybe you like. Who's somebody, here's the juicy question. Who's somebody that you follow just because you love to hate them? You know, like they're always posting like cringy things and you're always like, oh, but like you just can't not keep up with like the silly, goofy things that they're doing. And so you hate them, but you follow them just because you love to hate them. Who you got? That vegan teacher. That vegan teacher. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Slamming the vegans. Oh gosh. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? What? What? I don't know what he's saying. Boards? M-O-R-G-Z. Wow, I am so sorry. I completely missed that. All right, anyone else? Anyone else? Man, I just, I'm walking into just a dangerous subject. I don't know why I asked this question. What you got? Who? Trisha Paytas. Trisha Paytas. Is she a TikToker too? Yes. Kind of, kind of. All right. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. I love it. So there's sometimes, you know, there's those people you love, but there's also those people you love to hate. Like you watch them and you're like, oh, that's so embarrassing, but you still want to keep up with them and what is going on. Here's the thing. I think sometimes there's like the villain of the week. I feel like culture right now is just flying super fast. And all of a sudden, every single week, there's some celebrity, there's some group or organization that's like really messed up and everyone's mad at them. And sometimes I don't even know, like I'll be talking about some celebrity and someone's like, ooh, two months ago they messed up. We're not supposed to like them anymore. And I'm like, oh, okay, no, I don't like them. Yeah, sure. Okay, like what's going on? And then I read up and I try to figure out what's going on. Here's the villain of the week that shocked me recently. I'm going to, I might be, I might be offending some of you. Maybe you don't even care, but I might be offending some of your parents and I am maybe being a little stereotypical, but possibly some of your moms. The villain of the week a couple months ago, I mean, I keep saying of the week, but a while ago, People were hating and slamming Ellen DeGeneres, <gasps> right? I don't know. I'm not saying, I don't know what she did or what she didn't say, but I'm gonna just, I saw all these articles. Apparently she was being mean to all the people working for her. So people were trying to like work for her and she was like, you don't even get to speak to me. Like, and she'd like treat people like they are just nothing. And she's like, ha ha ha, I run the show and give away pride. But it's this, it's this crazy thing. Like everyone thought she's like the nicest person ever but apparently she's not that nice. I don't know. I'm not making claims. I'm just saying that's what culture said that, man, she is the villain because she hurt. Typically, this is how it happens. Somebody, celebrity or, or a group of people, they're mean to somebody. They say something offensive or rude or horrible. Sometimes it's not even, it's maybe not that bad, but people get really up in arms and start throwing things around before the details are even shared. And what happens is the people who are hurt or frustrated, they speak up. And a lot of the times, they should, right? If, if Ellen DeGeneres is really, really mean to everybody who works for her, then yes, they should be telling people, hey, don't come work for her. This is a horrible job. This is really, really bad. If someone is saying something horribly racist and, or just racist at all, and it's like, whoa, 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 let's point this out. This shouldn't be happening. And yeah, the world should know. But sometimes the details aren't even out and the culture starts reacting. And this is what we've been talking about in really the first week of the series. We talked about cancel 
culture about how there's this, um, this jumble of behavior. Sometimes it's justified, sometimes it's not, of shaming, calling out, and boycotting people for their actions. It happens when people online start to troll just for fun or, or different things that might happen. But today, I don't wanna talk about internet trolls and I don't wanna talk about celebrities. Today, I wanna talk about our lives. And <laughs> Sorry, there's... I'm not gonna bring it up, but there's another obviously event going on, so try not to be distracted. I'll try it. I'll try to focus like a fox. <laughs> Did any of your teachers ever do that? Focus fox? What? I heard like four different animals that you guys just said at me. Focus fox. I had a teacher, seventh grade. She always goes, focus fox. <laughs> and she'd make that sound and she'd, she'd get you. She'd get you. Focus fox. <laughs> what did you say? Quiet coyote? And what, you say something about a llama? What you, things are not the same anymore. Things are not the same. So, <laughs> all right, guys. So tonight we're not talking about uh, celebrities or internet trolls. Uh, I wanna talk about what happens when we have a real reason in our life to cancel somebody. When we have like a legitimate reason to hate somebody that has done something wrong to us, someone who has hurt us, hurt our family. What do we do as believers like, what do we do as Christians? Whether it's, you know, I think there's such a, an abundance of people we can hate in this world, whether it's uh, someone online that you don't really know, or maybe it's just someone in your family, or maybe it's someone in your friend group or at your schools. There's an abundance of people that we can hate, that we can be frustrated at, that we can be angry at. We can love to hate them. And sometimes there's a really good reason. I've told many stories in the past few weeks about when I went to college and I played football and there was this one guy on the team there was one guy on the team and we just butt heads and I would try to befriend him and one day he just started coming after me in front of everybody. He started making fun of me. He said all sorts of mean things about everything about me. And I remember I was like, dude, what the heck's going on? And, and as over time, it grew and it grew and he started saying things about uh, not only me, but my, uh, my friends he started making fun of the people that I was just hanging out with because they were hanging out with me. He started making fun of uh, my faith and that I followed Jesus and he called that into question. And then he started to make fun of my family. He met my parents one time and he used that to attack me. And I remember, I've heard yo mama jokes as a kid and it's like, ha ha, yo mama, blah, 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 that's funny. But boy, oh boy, when someone actually tries to attack your family, oh, I was hurt. I was so hurt. And I was angry and I loved to hate this guy. I'm, I wanna be vulnerable in this moment and say it wasn't a good thing, but I was so frustrated with him. And one day he got hurt really bad into practice. And because of that, he couldn't play the rest of the football season. And I remember in that moment, someone told me, hey, did you hear this guy? He like, he messed up his leg. He's out for the season. And I wasn't very sad about it. I was actually kind of this sinful, wicked part of my heart. I was kind of happy. Like, I was almost like this guy, like, I wanted revenge on him, but I didn't do it, but somebody else did. And I kind of felt good about it. And I know this is messed up and this was wrong, but there's something about being so hurt by this person that I wanted to hate them. I wanted to get revenge on them. And I loved that they were hurt and it's messed up and it is wrong. But here's the thing. I think sometimes situations like this are really complicated. It's really complicated because sometimes how do we as followers of Jesus, what do we do? Because yeah, we need to, when someone does something wrong, we need to hold them accountable. We need to make sure justice has happened and people aren't bullying others. But also Jesus tells us to show grace and to love and show compassion. So it's complicated. Do we, when someone hurts us or when someone hurts our family or our friends or somebody else, what do we do? Do we bring justice? Do we love? Do we hold them accountable or do we show compassion? It gets complicated. What are we supposed to do? And this is what I want us to explore tonight as we open up God's word. How do we balance these things? Because it gets complicated. If you have a Bible, open up to 1 Samuel chapter 24. Last week, we heard the story of David and Saul. Do you guys remember King David, King Saul? Maybe a couple of you are familiar. So here's a little recap. King Saul is the king at the time and he's messing up. He's not following Jesus or he's not following God slash Jesus, but Jesus wasn't around yet. So he's not following God and he's making mistakes. And so God says, hey, there's gonna be a new king. And he uh, ordains David. He calls David to be the king. But David's not the king yet. 
And so Saul, who is the king, he meets David, and he doesn't know David's supposed to be the king, and at first he's pretty impressed, right? Do you remember this? Do you guys remember last week? And he's pretty impressed with David. And then David starts being really successful. The people start worshiping David. They start talking about how Saul, like, he's really cool, but David is the man, right? And they start loving David. David before he is even king. And so Saul starts to get jealous and it leads him to seek to kill David repeatedly. He throws two, two different times, he throws spears at him. He recruits thousands of men to go search the country while David is running away to kill David. Last week, we focused on Saul and the jealousy and the envy that Saul experienced. This week, tonight, we're thinking about David. What should David do? He's following God. He's supposed to be king and someone's trying to kill him. So what is he, if he's following God and you know, he's running away, should he attack back? What should he do? That's what I want us to look at today. First Samuel chapter 24, starting in verse one, you'll have it on the screen. It says this, after Saul returned from pursuing the Philistines, he was told, David is in the desert of En Gedi. So Saul took 3,000 able young men from all Israel and set to look for David and his men near the crags of the wild goats. So here's what's happening. David comes back, Saul comes back. He hears where David might be and he recruits 3,000 guys and he goes, we're gonna go kill him. We're gonna find David and we're gonna hunt him down and we're gonna kill him. And so David is hiding and it says this, and he came, Saul came to the sheep pens along the way and a cave was there and Saul... <laughs> This is hilarious. He went in to relieve himself. So he went to the, you know, he had to handle his business. He went to the bathroom. And David and his men were far back in the cave. And so all of a sudden, they're hiding in the cave. They're running from Saul. And they're like, oh, here's your chance, David. Like, you can, you can attack him. You can get him. And this is what it says. The men said, this is the day the Lord spoke of when, of when he said to you, I will give your enemy into your hands for you to deal with as you wish. So then David crept up unnoticed and cut off a corner of Saul's robe. Afterward, David was conscious stricken or he felt bad. Have you guys ever done something and then felt bad about it like instantly? You know, you're mad at your sibling and you're like, I hate you. And you're like, oh, I kind of feel bad. I shouldn't have said that. That's what David experiences. He cuts that corner of the robe and he was conscious stricken. He was sad for having cut off the corner of his robe. He said to his men, the Lord God forbid me that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, also known as the king, or lay my hand on him for he is the anointed of the Lord. What he's saying, he's like, I shouldn't have done this. God tells us to respect those in authority and I shouldn't have even messed with his clothes. He feels guilty for what he has done. With these words, David sharply rebuked his men. He tells them, you know, he's like, why did you guys tell me I should attack him? He did not allow them to attack Saul either. And Saul left the cave and went his way. So two things. First thing, kind of funny with the whole bathroom thing, right? <laughs> Can we just admit that's kind of a goofy part of the Bible? You're like, what? Why is it talking about this dude going to the bathroom in a cave? This is weird. But besides that kind of funny fact that it makes me chuckle when I read it. But the second is this. It's like, what? David is like, he should totally have the rights. And he's totally, if I were David, I'd be like, this dude's trying to kill me. I'm gonna get him, right? Like, that's what makes sense. That's what this world and what I would expect. That's what we would expect. But not only did David not kill Saul, he didn't even hurt him. He cut off the, the piece of his robe and he felt bad about that. When David had the chance to take revenge, he chose peace. In this moment, David loved Saul despite Saul's actions. It doesn't mean that David didn't like Saul, but he chose to love him. So he didn't like him, but he loved him. Remember last week, the story ends with them not becoming best friends. They kind of decide just to not talk, to ignore each other. And Saul ends up dying and he just lives for the rest of his life hating David. So that's the story I wanted to hear. I wanted to explore tonight. Before we continue, can I give you guys a little bit of a disclaimer? And I really want you to pay attention to this part. So a little bit of a disclaimer, pause on the story. Keep in mind, this story is a different period of time and it was a different culture thousands and thousands of years ago. This is talking about two powerful men. One is trying to kill the other and the other one, rather than killing him back, 
he cuts off a corner of his robe. This is really weird. <laughs> this doesn't happen <laughs> in, in 2020. Can you imagine if somebody snuck up behind me and tried to co- cut a corner of my t-shirt? You'd be like, what the heck is happening? This is crazy. Right? Like, it's so weird. It's so foreign to us. This was a long time ago and a totally different culture. Talking about two powerful men. It's not talking pe- about people like you. It's not talking about people like me. These are two men who led armies and armies and armies. Large groups of people followed them. This was their job, their occupation. This is a different culture and a world. This is about adults, not teenagers. So I wanna make this very, 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 very clear. The moral of this story is not to be nice to somebody who's abusive or dangerous to you. So the moral of the story is not that if someone is abusing you or hurting you, whether, especially if it's an adult, whether it's a family member or your neighbor or a friend, whoever it is, the story is not that you just need to be nice to them and continue to be hurt or harmed in any way. That is absolutely 100% not the point of the story. The point of the story isn't to, to not ask for help if you are in danger. The point of the story is to not, is not to not seek justice when someone has harmed you. So before we continue with the story, I wanna say this. For some of you, when we talk about the people that you hate, it might be a classmate, it might be someone who's hurt you and kind of been mean, it might be someone in your, your sibling who's kind of been little, not as loving as they are to you, they take too much time on the Xbox, and those are really difficult things, absolutely. But I wanna say this, there are some of you the size of this room, uh, room um, the size of the amount of students here, there are some of you who are sitting right here who when I talk about people that you hate, it's much more extreme than that. So if you are in a position right now or you have been in the past where someone, especially an adult is, I'm gonna read what I wrote, especially an adult is harming you or harming someone else, please tell me or please tell one of the leaders today, I beg you, We want to love you and to care for you and help you. If you are in danger, whatever that looks like, I would love if tonight you would talk to me or talk to any of the leaders that you are comfortable with, that you trust. It does not honor God when we stay in harm's way. That is not the point of our story today. God loves you, he sees you, he's brought you here tonight and put these adults in this uh, space tonight to help to protect and to love you. So please tell us and we will help. Got it? Got it? Got it. Love it. Good. We love you guys. So that is not the lesson from this story. So what is the lesson from the story then? So it's like, wait, so Connor, what is the point? Remember last week, we looked at a story in the Old Testament and then we looked at what Jesus said about a similar thing. And so tonight we're doing the same thing. We're gonna flip to what Jesus said about this. Matthew chapter five and verse 38 to 45 in one of Jesus' famous sermons, we have this written down for what Jesus said about loving other people. If you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and tooth for tooth. So he's basically saying this, listen, People around us are saying, if someone takes your eye, you should take theirs. If they punch your teeth out, you should punch their teeth out. He says, you've heard it said that. But I tell you, Jesus says, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you and to take your shirt, hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them to give to the one who asks you and do not turn away from the one who wants to borrow from you. You have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Once again, Jesus says, listen, the world is kind of telling you, hey, like love your neighbor, the people around you, but like you need to hate people that are your enemy. That's what culture's saying. But I tell you, Jesus says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on evil and good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. (laughs) I love this. Classic Jesus. (laughs) He's such a wise sage and storyteller. It is beautiful. He, he, he's talking about, listen, this is what the world says, but if you're going to follow me, this is what you need to do. Instead of saying, love those who love you and hate those who hate you, Jesus challenges them and he challenges us tonight to try something new, to love your enemies. 
Although David lived so long before Jesus was here to tell this, to speak these words, David understood God wouldn't want to return Saul's hatred with more hatred. And so his decisions, David's decisions, point us to Jesus' word. And here's our challenge for tonight, that Jesus, if we're gonna be followers of Jesus, we're gonna live in love like Jesus, we need to love the people we want to hate. We need to love the people we want to hate to hate. So let's talk about turning the other cheek. I need two volunteers. I'm thinking the eighth grade boys. Can I get two of you guys to come on up? Yeah, yeah, just run on up. Boom, boom. Mask on. You good? You good? All right, here we go. So turning the other cheek. I feel like sometimes we read turning the other cheek. Um, just stand right here. Like, boom. One of you right here. One of you right here. Here's a pool noodle. Bop. Just like that. Bop. Just sorry. I, I had to. Was that, was that messed up? Should I not have done that? No, no, no not yet. You're going to actually hit each other in a second, but not yet. Okay. So when we talk about turning the other cheek, sometimes I think we get a little bit confused with what that meant. So I think I brought you up a little too early. So you guys just hang out, you know, you get a, a close view of the bandaid on my forehead. So um, <laughs> when, when Jesus said, turn the other cheek, he was not saying, just let people walk all over you. Like never stand up for yourself. Just like if anyone wants anything, just like, like whatever, your life is, doesn't have meaning. That's not what he is saying. Jesus had no problem with defending himself. Jesus got angry at people who are cruel and who are hurtful and who are evil. And Jesus, but Jesus never sought revenge. He never tried to escalate the situation or he was never cruel to others. So here's what I think Jesus did mean when he said, turn the other cheek. When someone lashes out at you to not be overcome by anger, to not plot your revenge, to not escalate the situation and to not react without thinking, but to react in wisdom. So here we go, two volunteers. Imagine this, um, everyone will be Grant. So you'll see yourself as Grant in the situation. So Grant is mad at Mac. Shake your fist in the air at Mac. Urgh, I'm so angry. What? Can Mac be mad? All right, oh my gosh. Okay, so, no, no, no. You're, you're, okay, you're both going to hit each other. Are you happy now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So everyone, we imagine yourself as Grant. Grant, shake your fist angrily at Mac. Urgh, I'm angry at you. So you're angry at him. So you walk up and because, you know, coronavirus, we're trying to stay socially distant. Imagine every time they hit each other with a pool noodle, it's like punching him in the face. So bop him on the head. No, 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 not yet. Not yet. You will, you will in a second. Not yet. Yeah, yeah. Just, just bop him. <laughs> That was so adorable. It was just like, <laughs> boop. <laughs> right? Okay. So Mac has two ways to respond. He was just hit slash punched in the face. Mac gets angry. He responds in anger. He doesn't turn the other cheek and he smacks Grant in the face. Oh my. Oh. Wow. Just like that. And then in slow motion, Grant gets mad again and he hits Mac in the face. No, 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 no. Slow-mo, slow-mo, slow-mo. And then Max Lomo hits him in the face. <laughs> all, right, all, right, all right, okay, 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 okay. See how, look, it escalates, it escalates. And then all of a sudden, Grant, he was the aggressor. But imagine us, right? We're angry. But now Mac is hitting them back. And if anyone walks up, if anyone were just to turn the corner, they just see two people smacking each other with pool noodles slash fake fighting, right? And then all of a sudden, this isn't good. This is bad for both of the people. So that's scenario number one. Here's scenario number two. I think this is what it means to turn the cheek. So Grant, you are mad at Mac. Urgh, and you slow-mo hit him in the head again. No, you can't block it. Oh, I thought you were gonna just, <laughs> just swing for the fences on that one. <laughs> so Mac now, he follows the words of Jesus, right? So he's angry. He has a right to be so frustrated at him. But instead of just turning and smacking him back with the pool noodle, he pauses. Here, we're, we're, I, gotta, I gotta find my notes. But instead, he takes a break. Take a deep breath. Whew, right, a deep breath. He raises his hands. He looks at Grant in the eye. And he turns his cheek. I surrender. I surrender. So now, now, <laughs> now, Grant, I think in this situation, Grant's gonna pause. Because if he has his hands in the air and Grant comes and starts just smacking him with him mercilessly in the face, he looks like such an evil person, right? 
Because all of a sudden he is being kind and loving and he is choosing to just be brutal and continually mercilessly smack him with a pool noodle. Turning the cheek, I think, causes the person who is angry and mean and doing evil things to pause and to not respond with anger and love, uh, with anger and frustration. Round of applause. Well done, well done. No, 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 no. You can give me the pool noodle. Do you really want the noodle? Do you have a pool in your backyard? Do you have a pool in your backyard? Do you want the pool noodle? All right, you can take the pool noodle. Boom. Round of applause, round of applause. How about this? Wait, you guys, okay, no, you gotta set it down. You gotta set it down. Mac, 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 Mac. No, set it down and you can take it after service. I, all right. Okay. If you guys, if you... I'm watching you, I'm watching you. All right, so that is what I think it means to turn the other cheek. Um, Here's what I would hope what would happen if someone is mean or evil to you, to stop and consider, uh, oh, give me one sec. I think that's the power of love over hate. When we react with anger, it escalates. When Jesus said, turn the other cheek, he wasn't telling us just to get over it. He's telling us to strategically love instead of hate because love changes things. And we get to experience God's love in our lives and show it to the world. So here, guys, I'm, I'm wrapping up. We're almost done. But here's a couple questions. I want us to think about this when we love people who, who we want to hate, when we seek to love like Jesus and love people who we want to heat, hate. We can ask these questions and think about this. And if you come to tribes, you'll be asked these questions in your group similar to this. Who are your enemies? Who are you tempted to hate because they've hurt you? Who has done wrong to you? And who are you tempted to hate and be so angry with because what they have done to you? Who have maybe you hurt out of revenge? You've already gone ahead and someone's hurt you and you've planned, you've done something back to get them back. And how can you make it right? How can you stop the back and forth frustration or anger or mean or bullying or name calling, whatever it might be? When if you have someone that you're fighting with, that you're disagreeing with, what can you do to stop the back and forth? And how can you love like Jesus in that moment? How can you strategically choose to love someone you want to hate? The world needs us to model a new way forward. And Jesus has called us to do this as Christians, that the way of love not to hate. This change can start with us when we choose to do these few things. First, when we choose to forgive. If you choose to forgive, forgiveness isn't something what we just do for them. I think it's really for us and it honors God when we decide that, man, God has forgiven me through Jesus. I'm gonna forgive whatever someone has done to me. And here's the thing, some of you, or my, you could probably tell me a story that would make me so angry and frustrated and sad and I might be right there with you that you are not ready to forgive what someone has done to you. And that's okay. Forgiveness is a journey. I'm not saying that you are a horrible person if you can't forgive someone now, but I'd encourage you that Jesus calls you on to that journey to learning to forgive those who've hurt you. The second thing to do is to notice. It's we all need people to model what it looks like to love radically around us. And so noticing when other people do that and also being the example so other people can notice you and the love that you have. We can notice and remind ourselves of the love of Jesus. And the love of Jesus pours out and stems all four of these messages that we have thought about. If we wanna think about the people that are difficult to love, we need to be reminded of the love that Jesus has shown us to be comfortable into that, be remind ourselves of that, to notice that. And that would encourage us to love the people we want to hate. The third thing to do so we can forgive, we can notice, and we can defend. We can defend. We've talked a lot about being hurt, but the reality is you often see other people getting hurt, seeing other people experiencing pain. You might notice a bully or learn about the the deep systemic problems of injustice and racism and all of these issues around us. And if you, are da- if you were David getting hunted by Saul, you would want someone defending you on your side, right? And so as followers of Jesus, we need to do the same. We need to defend others from evil and from hatred all around. The last thing is this. We can forgive, we can notice, we can defend others, and we can pray. The things that we've talked about today are difficult. For some of you, it might not be that hard, but for some of you, this is incredibly difficult difficult to think about and to consider. And so we need to turn to the God who hears our prayers, 
We say it all the time in middle school that God is a God who listens to us when we pray and God is a God who speaks to us through his word. And so that's why every time you come to church, we're gonna pray and we're gonna open God's word because God listens to us and he speaks to us. I think he has spoken to some of us tonight if you've been having ears to hear God's words for us, Jesus's commands for us. And so would we respond tonight in prayer? Would we respond recognizing and remembering and realizing that God listens to us when we pray? And so some of you might be going through something really hard, and I encourage you to pray to God about it tonight. In our last two songs of worship, we have some, a prayer wall kind of up here on your left and over there on your right. And you have uh, the opportunity to write your prayer requests down. You can put your name on it if you want. You can just leave it blank. And here's what I promise you. Each week, I t- uh, Megan or somebody else writes out the prayer requests they send them to me and I send them to all of the middle school leaders. And so we, um, I take out the names anyways, but if you wanna write your name down, that's more than welcome. But we believe wholeheartedly that God listens and responds to our prayers. And so if you feel like tonight, you need to help loving people that you wanna hate, would you turn to God? And I encourage you to take that resource if you want. And so um, If we want to live in love like Jesus, we need to learn to love the people we wanna hate. We can choose to forgive, to notice, to defend, and to pray. So let's pray tonight and let's end our night worshiping God, praising the name of Jesus, the King of Kings, the Lord of the Lords, the God who loves us tremendously. Father, I thank you that you've given us the gift of your word. God, I thank you that you've given us a, a great example of loving people that you shouldn't have to love. You sent Jesus to walk among people who have done wrong. You sent Jesus to be with people who hated him for his, his, uh, pa- uh, his passion and his love and his care for the world. They hated him to the point where they killed him and he never took revenge. He never s- plotted how to get them back. He never tried um, these crazy things that sometimes we fall into. And so, Father, would we follow the example of Jesus tonight? God, would you encourage us, would you help us to love the people that we want to hate, God? And I pray for the students who've experienced trauma, who are experiencing trauma, who are going through pain, through difficulty, whether they're here on campus right now, God, or whether they're watching this video from their home on YouTube, God, would you um, empower them? Would you give them the strength to reach out to me, to our leaders, to somebody that they trust, a teacher at their school, whoever it might be, God, would you um, help us to honor your name by getting out of difficult and painful situations? And so whether that's the situation these students are in or whether they're just frustrated with a sibling or a parent or somebody else and they're just really struggling with hating somebody, God, would you help us to turn to love? to leading this new way, this countercultural way of living life. Would we be full of your spirit? Would you guide us? We pray these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Why don't you stand to your feet as we worship together? You go before I know you've even gone to win my wars you come back with the head of my enemies you come back and you call it my victory bow down 
All I did was stay still In a hallelujah You have saved me It's so much better your way In a hallelujah Great defender It's so much better your way Seek to find your truth Your mercy is the shade I'm living in You restore my faith and hope again And all I did was praise And all I did was worship It was bow down. All I did was stay still. It's so much better your way sing alleluia and alleluia you have saved me it's so much better So much better your way. I found it so much better. So much better your way. And when I thought I lost me, you knew where I left. You reintroduced me to your love. You picked up. Pieces put me back together. You are the defender of my heart. And when I thought I lost me, you knew where I left. You reintroduced me to your love. You picked up all my pieces. Put me back together You are the defender of my heart And when I thought I lost me You knew where I left You reintroduced me to your love You picked up all my pieces Put me back
Jesus, the only one who could ever say 